Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So this is my first ever television episode, show, review, whatever. And of course, I would choose Insecure because I love that show. I love it. It's so fucking dope. It's such an amazing perspective from the young black millennial woman. And that's what we really need to see on TV right now. Us as in young black millennial girls. Shout out to Issa Rae and HBO for linking up and creating this amazing show. So let's just get into the review. Okay, so the episode starts off with Lawrence and Issa. They're on a date. Okay, my notes are right here. So like, I'm here with you. I'm here with you, but I'm also here looking at my notes and shit. So that's why I keep looking over here. So Lawrence and Issa, they're on a date and Lawrence is saying, you know, I know why you did what you did and hopefully we can move past that. And I was just like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> Episode one, they gonna get back together. She was daydreaming. She's on a date with um, random niggas and I love the fact that Issa got her start on YouTube, but she's also bringing up people from social media and also from YouTube, bringing them on their glow up with her. Like the first dude was Dustin Ross, the other guy was um, uh, Philip Hudson, you know, the one that used to do She Ratchet with his brother Emmanuel, him, and then the third dude was King K Ron. Ugh. So damn sexy, ugh, Jesus. So Phil asked, you know, how are you still single, blah, blah. And then she was like, and then she went into the rap. You know how she always like does her little raps or whatever. So I love that part. And then like in the rap, she was like, um, I'm a cheater. You shouldn't trust me. I don't want to be here, but my man will take me back. Where to check at? Here's a tip, run away. I was like, okay, all right. Chill, chill, okay. <laughs> Yo, this is this show is my life right now on so many levels. Like it's 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 sad. It's actually really sad. So the next thing we have Molly in therapy and she is not really opening up. She would much rather talk about what's going on at her job than actually than the actual issues that have brought her to therapy. And I my dog creeping. I find it funny that she and Issa got into it last season over her not wanting to go to therapy and then now the very first scene we see her in season two she's in therapy so that shows a lot of molly's growth that shows that she wants to get the help but it's it's gonna be baby steps for her because she's not necessarily open to the therapy but she's going so she'll open up eventually shit it's her money shit that's her copay, so shit, you know? Hey, if you're gonna go and not open up, I mean, motherfuckers still getting paid, so. So, um, she and Issa are on a walk, and then she tells her uh, that she's at least glad that the therapist is black, but she's not really trying to open up, you know, right now. Um, Issa says something like, dick on E, life on E, bank account on E. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Story of my life, though. Like, on some real shit. And Issa says she's tired of dating. She has to be all cute and charming and she has to put on this act, but she really doesn't want to do that. She just wants her man back. She just wants Lawrence back at the end of the day. And she keeps, you know, comparing every dude to him and Lawrence is avoiding her and she's just really in her feelings about that because she wants her man back. And Mo Molly says, guys always want you back when they know you're doing better without them so then you know that kind of like those are the wheels turning of her trying to hatch a plan to get lawrence back child lawrence 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 you know how we ended last season with lawrence hitting old girl from the back well the next time we see him in season two he is in that thing from the side and I'm like, oh my God, Lawrence, you have that death stroke, sweetheart. No wonder Issa is in her feeling. You put that thing down, okay? That's all, that's all, that's all I'm gonna say about Lawrence and you know, his death stroke. Like, what the fuck, Lawrence? You could kind of tell that he's not really feeling this girl. And then in the next scene, he's blowing up his air mattress, <laughs> like a little scrub. <laughs> he's blowing up his air mattress in his friend's living room and his friend was like, his friend said, you know, you got a good little setup. You hit up old girl on Friday and you over there and then you leave on Sunday. 
My friend Olivia calls it a, a hobo sexual, where you stay with someone and you, and you deal with them and you mess with them just to have a place to live. Bye. So next we have Molly and she gets some mail at work so she opens it up and she sees that um, it's a check for like 6900 was it 6997 So then she thinks that you know this is her getting a bonus or something like that but then she flips it over because it's it's the pay stub. She flips it over and it says um, Travis you know that's not her that's one of her co-workers and I'm looking like uh, Travis you need a black girlfriend shit. <laughs> So then fast forward, they're all out at like a co-worker's um, going away party. We get a cameo from Rail. Uh, I think his stage name is Lil Rail. He played the, the TSA agent in Get Out. Yeah, him. So he's there. So she's talking to the guy. I'm assuming that's Travis. I didn't catch his name or whatever, but he was a white dude. And she's talking to him and he says, you know, it's too bad that she's transferring. If she wasn't happy, she she couldn't cut it. So if she wasn't happy, she should have just said something because a closed mouth don't get fed. And then Molly's like, yeah, right. Like anybody would really listen to a woman complaining. And she's right because in the workplace, it's, it's okay for you, white man, to bitch and moan and complain and shit, but as soon as a woman or my, you know, especially, don't let it be a black woman, child. Let a black woman complain, then she's the angry black woman or she shouldn't be taken seriously or some shit. And that's fucked up, but it's true. Okay, so Issa is at her school. Well, she's at a school with the white girl Frida doing a presentation for We Got Y'all and i'm not gonna lie to you i don't care about none of these we got y'all scenes i don't care none about her job the only takeaway that i get from the scenes of her and her job and her co-workers are the microaggressions that we face and a few of her co-workers are i think straight up racist like these motherfuckers right here they was talking shit they was talking shit about the other girl saying that they thought she was a uh, latino but apparently she's middle eastern or you know something i'm not they didn't exactly say what she was so while they're all brainstorming you know how they can get more kids into their program isa pretty much says um she says it's their job to make things work when things get difficult i took that as a foreshadowing of her and her relationship with lawrence like okay she's probably gonna try to hatch a plan to you know get to lawrence because you got molly saying that niggas only want you back when they see you doing better off without them and now the wheels are turning and isa saying that you know we have to try to make things work even if it doesn't you know even when things get difficult and then the lady that she's talking to says, you know, if they don't see the progress, if they don't see progress in their program, then they're going to be moving on soon. You can do it if you put your back into it. I bitch. Get your ass out of here. But it was funny, as soon as she said that it, trend, it played the song by Ice Cube, you could do it if you put your back into it. I don't care what nobody say, that is the legal name of the song. You can do it if you put your back into it. Okay that song plays as it transitioned into the next scene so that was cute Issa's checking her mail and she gets a jury summons but it's addressed to Lawrence since Lawrence is still getting mail at the house I guess because he doesn't have his own place yet and so um she gets happy about it because that gives her an excuse to see him and then she's like you go get this man or you go go to jail she got a little jingle for every occasion yo she is a fucking nut so then she texts him and he says he'll come by to get it. So Issa and Molly plan a wind down. So Issa's having a conversation with herself, getting ready for her wind down. And it's really cute how she goes through these montages. Like um, it goes back and forth between the three um, interweaving, you know, like little clips. Like in one clip, she's picking out different outfits. In another clip, she's thinking about praying with him. In another one, she's thinking about seducing him. And then the next one, she's thinking about um, pretending how happy she is. And she even says, like, niggas on niggas on niggas. <laughs> like, she got all these niggas that she's talking to. Like, boy, she ain't even think about you no more. So then, um, I'm not exactly sure what a wind down is. It just looks like a kickback to me. That's what we call them where I'm from. They wanted everybody to bring a plus one so that all the singles can mingle. Issa's plus one is her sexy ass brother, but he's gay. You you can tell he's gay. He's cute though. 
Molly brings her plus one for Issa, but Issa's not really interested in him. And I feel I feel like Issa brought her brother as a plus one because she was expecting Lawrence to show up. You know what I mean? Like her her gay brother who already knows everybody there isn't her technical plus one. So since this is the day that Lawrence is supposed is supposed to be showing up to get his mail, I feel like she was gonna try to use him as her unknowing plus one. You know what I mean? So then uh, while they're all like kicking back, chilling, talking, the doorbell rings and it's Lawrence. It is Lawrence. But then the camera cuts from Lawrence to the person on the other side of the door and it's fucking Tasha. It was such a disappointment. Such a disappointment. So he, so Lawrence was actually at Tasha's house to pick her up. They're on a date. I don't give a shit about that date. They didn't really say shit interesting. Moving on to the next scene. The scene with the date pretty much only lasted like two minutes and then it cuts back to the wind down. So then at the wind down, they got that Cardi B looking like a collar lick. Hey, so that was playing in the background. And then Issa steps outside to sulk because Lawrence texted her and said, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it when really he was on the date with the old girl. <clears throat> with uh Tasha. Well, Molly steps outside and she's talking to Issa and then she was like, bitch, what was your plan if he actually showed up? And then Issa like, bitch, I don't know. I just want my man back. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever. You, 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 you set a trap and they either gonna take the bait or they not, you know? This is completely my life right now. It's so fucking sad. It's some young niggas outside and Kelly's like hollering at them like how niggas do us females when we just minding our business and then she invites them to the party and they come through and um, Tiffany is like, do you have some herb? We would like to partake in the smoking of the herb. The blood show up and Thug Yoda, he's talking to Kelly, he like, he said you butte and you thick. <laughs> I love Thug Yoda. He steals every scene he's in. Like right? he's he's what's up. And then one of the bloods starts doing a a, a crip walk, a, a blood walk, a, a brick walk. I'm assuming because bloods don't crip walk, right? And then he's doing the dance, and then Issa's like, "Is this choreography?" <laughs> that nigga was getting it though. He's doing the Cali shit, you know. Hey, 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 you know, he was getting it, he was getting it, he was hitting that little, so the neighbor knocks on the door and she's like, can y'all turn that down, some of us got kids, and then thug y'all are like, bitch, I got kids too, turn up. Then a small fire breaks out, I'm assuming somebody didn't, you know, ash they blunt properly, so small fire breaks out in the trash can, and then everybody dips. So moving on to the next scene, um, Issa's at home chilling. She's in a t-shirt and a panties. And then Lawrence knocks on the door. He actually came to get his mail after all. Niggas always show up when you're not ready. This scene is so awkward. Like there's so much tension between them and Issa looks so guilty and Lawrence honestly looks like he really wants to hurt her. And he does because he you know, gets, she hands him his mail right there at the door. <clears throat> there was no reason for him to come in the house, right? But then he's like, oh, I might have left some stuff in the bathroom. Issa knows full well that's some bullshit, but she decides to let him in anyway. Then as he's walking out, he drops his bag and then he kisses her and then he fucks her right there on the couch, child. Nigga, you give Tasha that bomb D. But then you get Issa 8.5 seconds? Really? Really? That's how you feel? That That's that I miss you, but I'm still mad at you sex. And then he came quick as hell and then he did. Nigga even had the nerve to give her a kiss on the cheek on his way out. She, you know, puts her panties on. Lawrence goes to the bathroom. He goes to clean up after them 8.5 seconds, 17 strokes. You know, he goes to the bathroom to uh, wipe his penis off and then he comes back out and he gives her, had the nerve to give her a kiss on the cheek. And then uh, after he leaves, Issa sits down on the couch and then she kind of like, I couldn't tell if she was smiling or if she was like confused. I'm not, I'm not really sure what that look was. It kind of looked like, huh, 
Like, damn, that really happened. I can't believe it happened, but I'm glad it happened. You know what I mean? That that's that's kind of what I got from that. After you know the show ended, my heart was broken. Lawrence, how you gonna play with her like that? I know she cheated. I know. But still, you don't have to do that too. You don't have to tease her like that. If you really mad at her, then just be mad. Nah, he know he ain't shit. But at the end of the day, he knows he still loves her. That's why he did that. And see, that's why you don't get into a relationship with a nigga that just got out of a relationship. Because, of course, he still loves her. She still loves him. And Tasha's just a rebound and probably doesn't know it. I don't know what Tasha knows. But she probably doesn't know that she's, well, she has to know because she knew, because Lawrence told her last season that he had a girlfriend. So yeah, she knows he just got out of a relationship, but she also knows that he's not 100% over it yet. I, I was in my fucking feelings. I'm not going to lie. After that shit happened, after he fucked her on the couch and just dipped, like, my heart was broken. I personally felt attacked. I felt triggered. Let me know what you thought of the episode and comment below. Let's get this let's get this discussion going. Are you team Issa? Are you team Lawrence? I'm team Issa because my life right now is a perfect combination of Molly and Issa. So like they both relate to me on so many levels right now. So yeah, bitch, I'm team Issa. And if you're team Lawrence, then that means you also sleep on an air mattress like he does in his friend's living room. So I will see you next week for my review of episode two. Bye.